Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, White House Art. My name is Lisa Whitehouse and for today's tutorial, I'm gonna walk you guys through how to paint a bird using watercolors. For a full list of everything you need to get started, just check out the video description below. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button if you wanna see other tutorials and videos just like this one. And please hit the like button if you enjoyed painting along with me. So to get started, we're just gonna sketch out the bird. So whenever I'm sketching something out, I always do a very loose shape to start just so that I know the proportions I want. So this looks nothing like the photo at first. It's more just about making sure that I don't make it too big on the page. So I'm just drawing a very loose shape about this size. The branch is gonna go here. And then the tail here. So that I know, okay, I like it to be about this size, but I know that everything's kind of wonky on this shape. So now we're gonna go in and add some of the detail. So for the beak, I know it kind of arches down here and then comes back. and then goes up like so, about like that. And then it has a line on the bottom. Then for the head, we're gonna come back into a point. Reminds me a little bit of the way a Blue Jay's head looks. And it comes down and straight back. And then there's a little bit of an arching line here. Then it goes out like that and down towards the branch. And we can get rid of some of these lines too that aren't applicable. Now we're going to check out where the eye goes. So I know that the eye kind of goes into where this indents here, that's the eyes kind of follows that same shape. And it's quite large. Kind of want to exaggerate it even a little bit more in my sketch. So it's about like that. And then there's the markings, which go over the eye, come back, and then go down. And when we're using the watercolor, it's not gonna follow these exact lines. It's gonna be a little bit looser than that. So then for underneath the beak, it starts down about halfway and goes basically straight down. And then out like that. And then the wing curves down. And we're gonna draw this line here that follows sort of this pattern here. And this wing here. And then the bottom of the bird. This is a pretty chubby winter bird, so feel free to exaggerate that even a little bit more if you'd like. Now the tail's definitely in the wrong position, but that's okay. The tail kind of shoots out from where the wing ends. So we're gonna go like that. So now that we're ready to start adding some watercolors, I'm going to show you which brushes I use, which colors I like to use, and you can of course be creative with which ones you want to use. Um, I love to use my Dagger brush. It gives me quite a bit of control, but allows me to add quite a bit of water as well. So first things first, I'm gonna lay down some clear water all over the bird. So I'm not concerned at all about staying in the lines for this layer. I'm just gonna fill him in 100%. I'm not gonna fill in the eye, I'm just gonna go around there. Just See, just laying down, no regard for staying in the line, with the exception of this glob on the beak, I'm not gonna like that. And I'm not filling in the beak or the eye right now, just cause they're so much darker than the rest, there's really no sense in doing it. And if you stare at the picture at an angle, you can see where you've missed And then what I like to do is add some ones that go outside. So even up here, and I'm keeping the form very loose. What I really don't want is to have hard lines coming off. Then what I'm gonna do is take my small liner brush and I'm gonna take a little bit of teal and I'm just gonna start dropping it in where I want that to be. Now in lieu of making this bird just gray, I'm going to use a mix of Payne's gray and teal so that 
it has some pops of color, but also some realism. So this is the Payne's Gray now, which I'm gonna to use to add this detail by the beak. And at this stage, the bird's gonna look very loose. It's not gonna have any detail and that's okay. This can be the part of the painting where it's hard to imagine that it's gonna to come together. And if the, paint, if the paint's not moving around enough, I just like to drop in a bit of water. And then if it's moving places I don't want it, like under there, what you can do is take a clean brush and just, sorry, a clean dry brush and just move that away. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow, move it under here, and then go in with that teal again and do the wing top of the tail. I'm gonna do some yellow here and there. So it's quite messy at this stage and that's okay. And whenever I get like a harsh amount of water, watercolor, I just put in some clear water to help blend that. Cause I don't like that. I'm gonna pick up a bit of this yellow where it's blending in with a dry brush. And then I'm going to take my flat brush and I'm just gonna come in and do a few splatters even at this stage. I do the majority of them at the end, but Sometimes when it's a, you've got a wet page, it's nice to come in and add a few because they'll really bleed out at this point. I'm gonna do a couple going away from the head like so. And that's good for the first coat. I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll go back and add a second coat over top. All right, so now that I've done a first coat, I'm gonna go in and add a second coat, which is gonna have a bit more detail, but still not be the final detailed coat. So this is gonna involve lining out some of these larger areas. So first things first, I know the top of the tail is darker. So I'm just gonna draw a line here. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of Payne's Gray and just drop that in over top of the teal. But you see, I'm still not adding a lot of detail. And then I'm gonna add a bit of teal with it. I got a little too wet there, so I'm just pulling out a little bit of the water. And then now's the time where I'm gonna go in and start adding the first coat on the beak. So I'm just gonna add Payne's Gray for this. And because it's just about getting down the first coat, I'm not spending a lot of time adding the detail on it yet. Now the eye. Now this is fine, these are some finer points, but I find when I add these, they allow me to get more excited about the rest of the painting. So once it has an eye, it's kind of brings it to life and I'm more interested in finishing it. All right, so now we're able to go in and add some of the large parts like the teal on the head. So I'm going to go in and fill in again. I'm going to drop in a bit of teal along the top, followed by a little bit of Payne's Gray. And 
And lots of this detail is gonna get washed out as it dries. And I'm gonna help it along because I don't, I still don't wanna have detail yet. And even at the final stages, I'm still not gonna have a lot of detail because the goal is to just keep this painting fairly loose. So I'm just kind of showing where the darker colors begin and end. And then I'm gonna take a bit more Payne's Gray and I'm gonna come right up here because it's quite dark near the beak. And here I'm actually going to have a little bit of detail. I'm gonna come in and just add that black here. And then I'm gonna do the center of the beak. And it's fairly indistinguishable from some of the markings on the bird. And then taking a little bit of clear water, I'm just going to blend out a little bit of that. Because we want just the top of the beak to be lighter, not the whole thing. All right, so now we can keep going. I'm going to add some more color on the wing. So this is fairly simple, this part. We're just gonna add in a bit of teal. And same as before, we're gonna add the Payne's Gray over top. So I'm gonna do a line here. We can add a few little ones here. So I'm gonna drop in a bit of clear water just to soften up some of those edges. And then using my flat brush, I'm gonna go in and add a few more drops of water to loosen that up a bit. And same with on the head, as it's drying, I'm just gonna add in a few more. And if I find any parts are too dark as they're drying, I can always lift out a bit of color with a clean dry brush. Now I'm going to, oops, I'm going to add a bit more definition here where this stomach kind of divides a little bit. I'm just gonna go like that. So I added clear water in first and then I'm dropping in the yellow ochre And I'm gonna, oops, a little bit of purple on my brush. I'm gonna add some more color on the stomach now. And the way I'm gonna do that is just by taking my large flat and adding those drops again. I just like the way they keep it very loose. We're going to erase this one that got away from us. All right. So I'm liking the way it's coming along. I'm just lifting out a bit of color where I don't want too much. I'm going to take a bit of a brighter yellow and come in here. And now while that's drying, I'm gonna go start adding some detail to the face. So I'm just gonna take a bit of yellow ochre and I'm gonna come in and start adding a few little feathers here and there. Now we don't have to add every little feathers. This is lo fairly loose style painting, so 
I don't want to see every little detail, but having some is nice. Just like so. And because this area is fairly dry, it's okay to add these details now. I'm going to take Payne's Gray and have it sort of fade in to where it gets darker. And once this is dry, I'm going to add some more detail in there, but for now, we're not able to. So I went and did it now, it, it would just all bleed in together and it would look just kind of messy. So wherever it's dry, I'm adding in a little bit of detail. So this, I can see this is still wet, but I just want to blend it up a little bit. So I'm going to use this opportunity to do that because if it's still wet, it'll blend nicely. Now I'm going to make my way down the bird and where I see dry spots, I'm going to kind of go in and add a few more of those brush strokes with using my liner brush to sort of imply that there's feathers there. Sort of showing the direction that they go. Now, wherever the page is still wet, they're just gonna blend in. So just keep that in mind, don't get frustrated. That's totally normal. If you wanna really be able to see definition, you have to wait until it's fully dry. I'm gonna add a few details here because there are some little black spots here. I like the way if it's still drying and you add some, I like the way you can see certain ones that have more definition and some don't because it's where the brush hits the dry spots on the page. So I'm just kind of going back up to the top and adding a bit more detail as I see it's drying a little bit. So the drier the page, the more detail you'll be able to see. Obviously, if it's still wet, you're going to get a lot of feathering out. So sort of use that to your advantage. So I see here it's still wet. So I'm kind of adding even a bit more water and having it blend out. So now I'm going to go back down to here and add these lines here. So now we're going to start doing the tree branch. So for the tree branch, I like to take my dagger brush and I just kind of run it over the branch, leaving lots of white spots and also being sure to leave out the feet. So basically I'm just drawing it on like so. And then I'm going to take a mixture of Payne's Gray and raw umber and I just kind of mix it together on the brush. And I go over the tree branch like so using varying amounts of pressure so that you don't have any perfect lines. And as it makes its way into the water, you'll see you get sort of a branch-like texture. And we'll go over this one more time too, so this isn't the final product. If your page is dry before you can get your paint on your brush, you won't get that bleeding effect. And I'll show you, see, you get it right here. If you don't get that bleeding effect, I'll show you what to do. You can just take a clean brush with a tiny bit of water on it and butt up to that, just in case that happens to you. And we're just gonna imply that the branch keeps going, but we're not gonna go off the page. I actually kind of like when it stops and there's white beforehand. So now I'm just adding a little bit more brown Nice texture is having like a dry brush that comes in like that. So 
So I'm feeling pretty good about that. So now I'm gonna go back and start adding more detail where I see it's dry. So there's not a lot of dry spots still, we're still waiting, but I'm just gonna go in here. Because parts of this are dry. Now this is a little bit darker on the bottom, so I'm just gonna, while it's still wet, I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit of color. And pretty soon we're gonna be ready to let it dry before we can add final details. I like to get as much done as I can before I let it dry. Put a yellow ochre here, just redefine this a little bit more again. Being careful not to touch the branch because that will definitely mess it up. All right, so I'm gonna give this a dry with my blow dryer and then I'll show you what I will do for the final coat. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this is looking so far. I'm gonna go in and add some final little details um, such as feathers. I'm using a light amount of Payne's Gray just to go in and add a few details. I wanna keep this one fairly simple so I don't wanna to have too many details. Oops, whenever it goes in too black, I kinda of lift a bit of that out. I don't want these strong black lines right there in the middle. That's easy enough to do with a clean brush. And I'm gonna take a bit of teal, add some little Teal feathers in. And we're gonna take more Payne's Gray and go in right here. Cause I'm keeping a bit of that illustration type feel by adding a few here and there, a few black lines. Now you don't have to do this. I love the look of non outline paintings as well. Um, it's totally up to you. I'm doing a mix of loose watercolor with a bit of an illustration vibe, having those black lines. So I'm doing long swipes with the brush right there. And then using the smallest amount of watercolor, I'm gonna add a few on top of the wing here. And in leaving certain parts not even filled in at all, it definitely gives more of that illustration vibe. And like I said, if you prefer the look of more realistic, just don't add too many of these black lines and you'll get you'll achieve that. You can add some in that are a little bit looser like that. Clearly that's not actually on the bird. It's just something I'm doing for fun. Now we're gonna add in the feet, which are a light gray. So I'm just gonna fill them in. Here, and we can go back in after and add a tiny bit of detail with some white pen. The reason I'm using only Payne's gray and not any other color is because the branch has brown on it and I want it to, the feet to be distinguishable from the branch. So I'm gonna go in and add a bit of color to the branch as well. A bit more detail on the branch. So I'm actually digging the way some of these lines look. So I'm actually gonna add a few more on the head. And like I said, if you want it to be a bit looser, just don't do what I'm doing here. Don't start filling in more thin lines. You can also do this with black pen, that works too. All right, so now we're gonna go in and add a bit of darker spots on the branch to give it 
a more realistic look. So basically using my liner brush, I'm putting varying pressure on the brush so that it looks like the texture and the bark on the tree. I'll actually take this one step further in a second by adding some splatters. Some of them get a little dark, so then I take clear water. Like that one's quite dark. I'm not liking how strong it is. Whenever you put like a huge swath of dark color in, it's going to draw the eye there. So you do have to kind of be careful. You don't want the branch to be the focal point of the painting. So I'm going to lift out a little bit of that where it got really dark. And it'll also lighten as it dries. Paints gray lightens to sort of a bluish gray. So it's almost at a point where I'm happy with it. I'm just gonna add a few more details. I like some of those. And now I'm gonna add in a couple of splatters of brown on the branch. And some that go outside of the branch. And then because it's done, I can add some yellow ochre ones over top and they'll actually stay showing up. If I had done it too soon, they would have just blended right in. And then I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray, add a few of those. If I twist the painting around, I can actually have some of them go like that, which is kind of fun. Gonna add a bit more definition here. We're just about done. That. Paint's gray dries so light, so I'm actually having to go back in and add some more again. And now I'm going to take a white liner pen, if you have white paint, that works too. And I'm going to go in and add just a few little highlights here and there. I think this just makes it a little bit more interesting. Redefining these little toes. I really love painting birds. I just find there's so many different types. They're so interesting. Just adding a few little swipes of the white. I'm gonna come in with a bit more white ink in a sec. I like to do what I can with the pen, but I also have this um, white acrylic ink as well. And I just use this with a brush. Ideally, your painting would be completely dry first. I'm coming in with it a bit wet, so some places it might have blended a bit, but that's okay. All right. And because this is a wintry scene, I'm actually gonna add a few little white splatters on it too. So using a clean brush, I'm gonna come in, grab a bit. And I just noticed that someone on the eye, which I don't like, but it's no big deal. Cause we can just come in a little bit of black and cover those up. If you put too much, you might have to do two coats, but I didn't get very much there, so that will do it. Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please hit the like button if you loved it, and be sure to leave a comment letting me know what you want to see me paint next. Have a wonderful day.